attempting to collect the personal histories of as many veterans as possible. The, the World War II, Korean, Vietnam Wars, uh, as well as the more recent conflicts in the Middle East. So this is a, an ongoing project and uh, when we finish this interview and the, the, you will receive a recording of it and that will be recorded in the Library of Congress. So uh, it'll be there for historians to, to look at if they wanted to find out about your service or your unit or where you were and what you did. Mm -hmm. So uh, we thank you for your participation and uh, we'll get started here with the, uh, uh, the interview. Uh, we're talking about the World, World War II, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and when did you join the service and which service did you join? I joined the service, uh, I think it was in 42. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was uh, the U.S. Army? Yes. Okay, and were you in, uh, drafted or were you enlisted? Uh, I was drafted. Okay. I did, uh, I went down twice to enlist in the Navy because I loved the water, and I, I didn't pass because I was an inch too short. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he says, go home and do a lot of exercise and come back in a couple of weeks, this Navy place I was in New York City. Mm -hmm. I did that for two weeks, and I went down again. I still was an inch too short. I said, well, let them draft me now, and I don't know. Uh, so, maybe it could have been a month or so, and then I was drafted or so. I, I understand. Uh, and where did you live when you uh, were drafted? Uh, 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 43 Townsend Street, Port Chester, New York. Okay, and you still live in Port Chester these days? Yes. Okay, can you tell me your address, if you don't uh, mind? It's uh, 5 Robert Avenue, Port Chester, New York. Okay. Uh, and w what were your motivation? Why did you want to join when you were trying to enlist uh, in the I, I was going to go to go fight the Japs. We used to call them the Japs, not Japanese like they call them now, you mm -hmm. know. I was gung ho to go and fight them because what they did to Pearl Harbor. I see. <clears throat> did you have any uh, brothers or sisters in the service? No. Okay. And uh, I did worry about one brother when I was in the service. I said, I wish this war would be over so they don't draft my brother. It was, he'd be going in next, you know. But it was over in Europe at the time. I see. And. Uh, when you were uh, drafted, where did you go for training? Uh, Camp Croft, South Carolina. I see. And did you go with a group of uh, uh, draftees oh, yeah. from the New York oh, area? Yeah. yeah, it was with a group, yeah. Uh, and how long did, did you stay at Camp Croft? It was Croft? 15 weeks uh, basic training. I see. And where was Camp Croft? Do you remember? The, okay. Where was Camp Croft? South Carolina. Okay. Um, how did you uh, like your first few days in the army? Well, it was it was it was pretty rough. Seems like uh, when your na your initials your last initials was B. Seemed like every time I was going moving around, I was getting KP, uh, washing dishes and whatever for uh, I don't know how hundreds of people and peeling potatoes and whatnot. So you were about 21 then when you joined about the service? 21, 22. Had you been away from home before? No. So were you homesick at all? In a way, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and what sort of training did you go through when you were in boot camp? Uh, infantry training. Okay. What, what the M, uh, M1, was the O3 rifle, then it was the M1 rifle. Okay. And uh, a lot of physical training, of course. Huh? A lot of physical training or exercise. Oh, yeah, a lot of physical training, hiking and full, full packs and whatnot. Do mm -hmm. you remember any of your uh, instructors while you were in basic training? Yes, I remember my captain, Captain Bremen. How do you spell that? Do you remember? Captain Bremen. 
it's, I, I believe it's B-R-E-M-A-N, Bremen. Mm -hmm. But he got wounded when we first were in battle. They were going to fly him back to England. Mm -hmm. And I never seen him no more. So he was your instructor in basic training, but he also stayed yes. with the unit? Yeah, he was with us in, in the States and in Europe. Interesting. Uh, and how did you... Uh, how did you get through the uh, the basic training? I mean, did you, uh, did okay. you feel... Okay, it was all right. Uh, I went through basic training after five or six weeks, I believe it was, and whoever wanted to go to town was a convoy going into town, and it was called Spart Spartanburg, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we were going out looking for women, mm -hmm. and I see this gob, he's a sailor, walking down the street. I said, he wouldn't buy that uniform, that gob. I'm saying to myself, you know, because he came up to here on me. And uh, you had to be a certain height to get in the Navy at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was taller than him. I stopped him, and we pretty got in a fist fight. <laughs> and, uh, you were mad at him he, because he, he got in the Navy? He, yeah, he got in and I didn't. And I figured the girls in the, in the South won't go out with a civilian. Only if you had a uniform. I figured he bought that uniform. Oh. He had all the parked, uh, the, the, the blue sailor uniform on. He had his wallet folded over. You know, he was gung-ho, you know. But he said, they'll take you now in the Navy if you have one ear. They needed men in the Navy. Yeah, but I never went in the Navy. I so you didn't end up with, the, with a fight over the short guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to go in the Navy, you know, to get on a yeah. destroyer or a battleship or something, you know. So after uh, after basic training, uh, where were you assigned? I, I, I was in a lot of camps in this country before we went overseas. Uh, I was in uh, South Carolina where I started. Then I went to Georgia, Camp Gordon, Georgia. Then I went to Camp Blanding, Florida. Then I think we came back to Fort Jackson, Florida, uh, Fort uh, South Carolina, and we got on a um, uh, train that was going to Camp Shanks, New York. We are going overseas. Mm -hmm. And when uh, it was on the SS Argentina, it was a, it was a liberty ship. Mm -hmm. And when we were, I, we were on our stern of that ship, you could hear the props moving on. Oh, yeah. <coughs> What uh, what was the unit you were with at that time? Uh, the 26th Infantry Division. <clears throat> and was the Infantry Division uh, intact from uh, oh, yes. from all that training? Yes, yes. So you were traveling together and you stayed together? Yes, yes. And where did you go when you... Uh, I, I, I believe it was Cherbourg, France, or La Havre, France, right from uh, Camp Shanks, New York. We went right on the ship, the SS Argentina. We're, and that was the only ship on the ocean that day. The next day was another one, and another. And as far as your eye could see, there were ships all over, and there was um, submarines, American submarines on the outskirts, protecting the kind. You know, the ship was gone like this, gone, in, and it took us 18 days to go to Europe. So it was a, a big convoy then, huh? Oh yes, yes. And how many uh, men were in the, the Yankee division? Well, I I, I, uh, I I don't know exactly how much, but I did know. I don't know if it was 25,000 men into the division. I, I You go by squad. Squad, you got 12 men. Uh, a platoon is 48 men. And you got four platoons, four, four platoons to the battalion. Mm -hmm. Then comes regiment. Then comes divisional, you know. Now, I, I believe there was uh, 40, uh, thousands and thousands of men in the division. Sure. And I even knew, I didn't know, I knew, of course, our, uh, our commanding general of our division, the 26th Infantry Division, uh, was General Paul. And that's a two star general. Mm -hmm. all, all, all division commanders are two star generals. So, uh, with all those men traveling as part of the uh, 26th Infantry, yes, then yes. Uh, they were the, on several different ships, oh, yes. for sure. Yes. 
And uh, what kind of equipment were you bringing with you? Uh, 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 you mean your full equipment? You had everything in there. You had your mess kit in there. You had a raincoat. You had a poncho. Uh, your toilet articles and all. You, know, you carried it with you. Sure. And you had uh, your hard hat? Oh, yeah. Oh, that, of course, that was shot off me, and I don't know where I forgot what hell that was, France or someplace. And, and what kind of weapon did you carry? Uh, the M1 rifle. M1. Uh, and when you, uh, after 18 days at sea, you arrived in France. Yeah. Correct? And what, what, what did you do when you got to France? Jeez, I really don't remember that when we got there. We got the French Revolution. I really don't remember that. Okay, and when, uh, approximately what date did you arrive I in Europe? I wouldn't know that either. So you spent some time uh, in training in the U.S. before you deployed overseas. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it might have been... Oh, well, I think, uh, um, that was three years, three months, and 13 days in the service. I think I was a year and a half in the States before I went overseas. Okay. So there was quite a bit of training going on. Yeah. And what were you, other than infantry training, was, were you trained in any other specialties? In, uh, oh, yes. Uh, I uh, trained in the BAR rifle, mm -hmm. in uh, the light machine gun, the air-cooled machine gun. And what was your rank when you arrived in Europe? Uh, I think it was a, a PFC. Okay. No, no, what's the matter? I was a buck sergeant. Okay. I was a sergeant when I arrived in Because okay. I was a sergeant in the States. You know. And when, uh, when you got there, uh, how many men reported to you? How many men in your squad? Eleven men were underneath me. And were they all... Uh, oh, yeah, like in the group. They always would ask me questions, and if a shell came in and... The men will look at me and say, hey, Sergeant, how come you didn't hit the ground when I, you know when you're, that shell is close and you know when it's miles away. He says, well, how do you know? I said, when a shell comes in and it, you, you don't hear it no more, that shell is close, you hit the ground. When you hear that shell, go on, go on, that shell's miles away, you know. Interesting. Uh, okay, and what were your, uh, your, First experiences when uh, when you got to France. What uh, what what was this, your uh, the battle? You mean? Well, I mean, did you have to travel in, in to oh, yes. further into uh, Europe in trucks? Uh, well, all the sergeants were called down the battalion at, at the UCP, a command post, and and uh, I think a lieutenant colonel. He he's in charge of your, your battalion. Mm -hmm. And um, he was telling us what our objective was going to be going into battle. I see. And of course, you had to bring it down to your men too, you know. And your objection at the time were, we're going to cross this field, and we're going to come to a woods which which is called Moncourt Woods. We we're going to come across this field. We we're going to clean out the woods. And we're going to go through this town, Bazange le Grand. That's in France. We're supposed to clean out the town and dig in on a high hill on the outskirts of town. But the first day we 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 just got into the woods. Mm -hmm. We were pinned down. Well, machine gun crossfire from each corner, and we were down. And I could hear men yelling, and shells, 88s were coming in on us, mm -hmm. hitting us on the open field. And this, uh, and this one man that was alongside of us, he was a cook. He was a cook and he happened to throw a, a grenade and knock out that machine gun nest. When he knocked out that nest, we, then we got out of that fire and we crawled into the beginning of the woods. Mm -hmm. how, how many days after you arrived in France was this battle? That you in the saw? battle, I think it was 19 days. After you got to France, or the battle itself was 19 days? The, the battle itself. Okay, how long after you got to France were you first in, in that combat? Oh, I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and when you were describing this, this, uh, this battle, 
where the cook took the uh, machine gun nest out. Yeah, that's uh, when we all we crawled up to the to the edge of the woods. We were safe there because the Germans were in chewing shells on their own men and, that were in the woods. How many uh, U.S. soldiers were involved in that? Oh, I. Uh, it wasn't just your squad, though. No, no, no. That was the whole company, the whole battalion. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, yeah, the whole battalion, you know, there, yeah. Did you have uh, artillery support? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And uh, how about armor? You have any tanks? No, armored was way later on. It was the 4th Armored Division. That was a good division. We, f we were with that. Fourth time, of course, I rode on tanks with the fourth time, but that's when we really were pushing mm -hmm. under General George S. Patton with the Third Army. With uh, with this battle, did uh, you were in, in in combat there continuously for 19 days? You said. Yeah. Then we were pull uh, we were pulled back for a rest. Was it 19 days? I yeah, it was 19 days. I remember that. Then we were pulled back for a rest, and we went to Metz, France, hmm. and uh, and I, I think we were there a week or two weeks, and the, and there was orders at the division that the, the Germans were going to counterattack and push the Americans back into Paris, mm -hmm. but it never happened that way. That's one day the, the Battle of the Bulge came in. Now that first battle, the one before you had your your return to Metz for rest, was uh, was that well, did that, that battle have a name? Did, did, did yeah, well, that was, when we went back for rest, I had I had a Nova coat on in uh, in in uh, in my in, 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 in my, on my right buttocks, left buttocks over here. My pants were stuck to me, you know, so. When it was stuck to me, I went to the CO, and they put me in a, a field hospital. I had shrapnel in me. Mm. You didn't know that? Didn't even know that I had the shrapnel in me. Mm. <laughs> so then, uh, then after your uh, pullback and your rest in Metz, then uh, you were involved in the Battle of the Bulge? Yes, that's what the bulge, because they loaded us on what they call cattle trucks. And we were, and it was cold and snow. We were riding all night long, and that's where. Uh, well, in the bulge, I was in Belgium, in uh, Luxembourg, Belgium. Mm -hmm. And you were still with the uh, the twenty sixth twenty sixth infantry division, yeah. Okay. Lost a lot of men down. And you lost a lot of men in the Battle of the Bulge. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, where you said you were in Luxembourg, uh, Luxembourg, Belgium, yeah. And uh, what can you remember about the the Battle of the Bulge? Uh, yeah. There was so so much of it there. After that Battle of the Bulge, seems like uh, I was out of it. I didn't know nothing no more. I I, I wanted them to kill me. I, I was out of it. Yeah. You know, I, I was, went through so much that I was out of it. I wanted them to kill me, but but uh, the Lord kept me. I didn't go. You know. So you were. Uh, how long was the Battle of the Bulge? Uh, oh, I I don't remember that. But it was a long time. That was a long line. That was a long bulge. You know, it was going from country to country. That bulge. You know, mm -hmm. and it was, and I was close to. Um, Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf, Germany. In Alex Rodriguez, the ball player for the Yankees, mm -hmm. he was in Dusseldorf for his. He got a shot or something over there. Yeah, he <laughs> well, might well, he's got there. money, you know. He, he was he was there, but not for uh, not, fighting not a war. war. No, no, no. He was born there. I don't think. No, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, the the Battle of the Bulge. Did you did your company uh, su suffer any casualties? Separated cats. No, did they have any any wounded or killed? Oh yes, 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 yes. I I don't know how many. Yes, yes. But uh, you weren't wounded, other than the shrapnel in your rear the end. Shrapnel in my rear end, over here, down here. Okay. I, 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 I didn't even know. My clothes were sticking to me. 
Did uh, how long were you? Uh, I was in the field in the hospital. Field hospital. I think it was a couple of days, and then it was right back on the front again. So you got the Purple Heart for that? Yes. Okay, and uh, you showed me that, right? Yeah. It's in your yeah. metal case. Um, what were the uh, the conditions during that battle? I mean, did you live in foxholes? Did you oh, have... yeah, slit trenches, foxholes, yeah. And did you uh, have enough ammunition? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we had it, bandoliers of ammunition. And you had uh, enough food? Uh, now and then we got hot food. Otherwise you ate C rations or K rations. Cold food, you know. Mm -hmm. And how much sleep would you get at night? You would get much sleep. You didn't get much sleep. And when you when you slept there, it was cold, I imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. How did they, did they do anything to keep you warm? No, no. I think what kept me a lot was my feet. Yeah, I was. I worked around the salt water here, you know. And I, I, I think in the field hospital it says they asked me that, and um, they told me if it wasn't for the salt water, I would, I would really had bad feet, you know, mm -hmm. because my feet were swollen, you know. Uh, what I, was uh, during that? Uh, Battle of the Bulge in that time period, what was your uh, responsibility? What was your job? Were you a squad leader there? I was still a squad leader. Okay. But after, when I, it seemed like I lost it all, like I, I couldn't fight no more. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I became a PFC, you know. Okay. That's what I was discharged at, but my rank was a sergeant during the States and in combat. Now, when, uh, after the, the Battle of the Bulge, uh, you mentioned earlier that you made a push into Germany with Patton. Yeah. Now, when did that happen? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't remember that. No. How, how long we after the We do know he was a uh, General George S. Patton, was commanding the 7th Army. Mm -hmm. And then he was transferred by General Eisenhower to, to the 3rd Army. That's when we had the big push going through Germany. That's when we were riding with the four armored on tanks and recon cars, half tracks, whatever, whatever you could get on. And uh, do you remember any of the, the the towns that you went through or places no, that you were? Some of the towns I do remember. Like I never uh, Freeburg. I was in Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia I was in Austria. Germany, of course, Belgium. Mm -hmm. I think I've been in four or five different countries over there. Okay. Uh, during uh, the time that you served in Europe, did you uh, write letters home? Oh, yes. I, had. I used to write letters home when I, my sister used to write me letters, mm -hmm. my older sister. She used to write me letters, and I used to answer her, but when she'd write me the next letter, she says, Ricky, whatever you wrote me, she says, I never understood anything, because it was all censored. It was all cut out. Mm -hmm. And how often... But she knew where I was all the time. How long did it take the letters to get to you, do you know? Oh, no, I don't remember that, no. And uh, how often would you get mail? I, I really don't know. We used to get mail, but I don't know how often, though. I don't know. As a mail call every couple yeah. of days or yeah. every couple I really, of weeks? I, I couldn't answer that question. Sometimes okay. you'd be going days and days without mail, and some days it mm -hmm. seemed like it would be a day or after another, or two days later you had mail. And mm -hmm. I was glad to get mail from my sister at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything that... Uh, you did when you were in the service for good luck or uh, su superstitious wise? Uh, there was, uh, he, he's gone today, uh, uh, Tony Barbaro, uh, he was in a heavy weapons company, which was D Company. And he used to ride a lot in a Jeep. And he was a gunner with the 81 millimeter mortars. 
And I says to him, I says, Toto, the only thing I want from you, everything I got is carried on my back. You got the Jeep, you know, he rides in a Jeep. I said, I want the, 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 the chocolatoes out of the UK rations and the cannon seeds. The seeds would bind me up mm -hmm. so I didn't have to go to the bathroom, you know. Yeah, did uh, that That suggest maybe you, you got sick once in a while uh, while you were in the front lines? No, I wasn't. No, I don't remember being sick. No. Did, they, uh, did they check you out to be sure that you were no, okay? No, no. So as long as you were able to move, you know, I guess you, mm -hmm. you still, you, you're still, uh, you're the infantry and, and you're in combat, you know. Did there, was there a medic assigned to your... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, there was always medics around. You know? And uh, at the battalion level or at the, at the... Geez, I don't remember that. There because wasn't a, a medic on your squad? No, 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 I, it could have been for the... Either for the, I imagine it had been for the company. Mm -hmm. Be for the company, I believe. Yeah, it'd be a, yeah, the medic to the company. It won't be for the battalion. Uh, did you ever see uh, any shows, uh, any USO or Bob Hope or anybody like that? No. No? Never seen anything like that when all those, you know, wealthy people are Bob Hope. I remember they saying that he was going to be there and all that. We never did see him. We were always fighting. Yeah. Do you remember any of the names of people who were in your company? Not in my squad, I remember a lot of the names. Where, where did it was like a, a John Beam, a Bennett, Finkelstein, mm -hmm. he's Jewish, you know. Engel, that's Jewish. He was, that was in my squad. I, I remember my men now. I don't remember more now. Yeah. Oh well. How about the officers? Oh yes, the officers. I've I've known. Uh, we had a first lieutenant that was with our our our, our platoon, Lieutenant McWhorter. He uh, he was with our platoon. Well, he 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 trained with us in the states, you know, Lieutenant McWhorter. And when my, uh, Captain Bremen got hit, and they were going to fly him back to England. Lieutenant McWhorter took over the platoon, mm -hmm. first lieutenant. Do you ever keep in touch with any of those men? No, no. I wanted to, uh, what's I got, I don't want to, I wanted to be clear about all that. Uh, mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, did you ever have any leave when you were uh, in Europe? No, no leaves in Europe, no. Uh, What uh, uh, what other battles, other than the Battle of the Bulge, do you remember any other names of battles that well, you were in? Like, uh, I don't know, to me it seemed like every time we were moving we were in some kind of a battle, but whichever battles they were, I don't know. Mm -hmm. There are some, some names in your papers that you showed me of other, uh, other battles, so we'll look at those if... Uh, uh, if we want to find out what, what they were called. Sometimes it's hard to remember all those years ago, you know. Oh, of course. I didn't even know that I had all those all those medals coming to me if it wasn't for the, the fellow that lived across the street from me now because he's gone. That tells me, I said, Rick, he said, you've been through so much. As he says, why don't you? I said, I don't want to be bothered. He said, I'll write to them for you. When he wrote for me. For me, for all my medals, they sent me all those medals there. So those those came after the war. Yeah, that was nice of him to do. Was, yeah, was he in the service with he, you? Yes, he was. Yes. And who was he with the Twenty Sixth Infantry? Yes, he was with the Twenty Sixth Infantry Division. Was yes. he in your battalion or your he, company? In the company. In the company. Okay. So, and where did he live? He he lived across the street from me. Really? Yeah. So you did see him yeah. after the war? Yeah. Yeah, I did see him. Yeah. Anybody else from Port Chester that you... Uh... And there was his brother there, but uh, his brother was in the medics. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was in a fighting combat guy. He, he took care of the, the, the wounded. He was in the medics. Yeah. That was Zeke. Yeah, he's passed on too. 
What? He's the one that told me the right to get all the sand he wanted me by. What was, uh, what was their last name? Varbero. How do you spell that? V-A-R-B-A-R-O. Okay. That's good information for, yeah, for well, other people she, who might want see, to. Sometimes you bring in things out to me, which seems like I can remember things way back. Don't tell me what I ate yesterday. <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> My well. God. Now, uh, when did you return to the States? December the... 2nd, 1945, I was discharged. Okay, did you come back to the States with the, with the 26th Infantry before you were discharged? Well, uh, or were they still well, deployed? No, well, when we were come, uh, getting discharged, um, they were discharging you by your numbers, the time you had over there. That's mm -hmm. how you were coming back. So you didn't come back as a unit, though? No, no, no. So it was, uh, and I'm not going to show my ignorance of history, VE Day. Huh? Do you remember what day VE Day was? No, I don't. But I know it's on the calendar you, that you got home. But it, well, you were discharged after VE, after VE Day, right? No, no. No? No, I still was in Europe. Wait okay. for our time to be discharged. Okay. I was discharged on December 2nd, 1945, and I was home one day, and the following day I went and drive a coal truck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, he carried coal, 200 pounds, one, one, 100 pounds and 100 pounds on your back carrying coal. You're a strong man. <laughs> At that time I was, yeah. And, there's nobody fooled with me at that time, I could tell you that. <laughs> and when you were discharged, you came back to Porchester? When I did, yes. And I uh, came back from Grand Central on a local train. And uh, when I was coming back, I, I can remember all the names like coming back. I, I think the first stop was on the 25th Street. And the next one, or whatever it was, the next stop. Till, till they came to... Harrison and after Harrison came Ra Ra they didn't they could never pronounce the towns right the conductor then he said P -P Porchester mm -hmm. I flew off that train and I went right home <laughs> uh, yeah it was a happy day I'm sure yeah uh, after you got home you said you went right to work. I was home one day. I said, what am I going to do? So uh, I think at that time I looked in the paper and they, were, they needed a, they needed a, a coal driver, uh, Port, Portchester Fuel, they called it then. Portchester Fuel, yeah. And uh, I think I put two years in, a, in that, being a coal, uh, a coal driver. Didn't it, I did it's something else after two years in there. Well, it, it, you know, if it comes to you, just uh, shout it out. Uh, did you ever go back to school? No. Okay. No, no. Uh, and I, I believe I was. I believe I was 16 years old when they, when they, when our, our my mother was on welfare, mm -hmm. and they took me out of school when I was 16. Otherwise, they were going to cut my mother off welfare, and they gave me a job. I worked uh, a week, a, a week out of the month. Mm -hmm. So my folks still could be on welfare. Did you uh, take advantage of any of the GI Bill benefits? No. 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 Uh, did you join any uh, veterans organizations after the war? Well, I belonged to some, some, yeah, I belong to Veterans of Foreign Wars. We have a, meet, a meeting every month uh, down at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I belong to the American Legion and uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars and whatever. I think I belong to a few there. I forgot the other ones, whatever. I saw your car outside and it had a DAV license. Yes. Were you considered a, uh, a disabled American well, veteran? Uh, the, 
that the, I don't know, the, the Sable Veterans, that's another one, the Sable Veterans wrote me a letter. I, I got a letter from them if I wanted to get uh, VA license plates. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I would take them. And, and, and it was like a, a form that I filled out and where did you want the, the album put? And it just didn't matter. And, and they put the form on it and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Now is that, uh, were you eligible for the disabled American vets because you got the, uh, the Purple Heart? Yeah. Okay. But when did you get the Purple Heart, by the way? Not the wound, but when did you actually get the oh, medal? I don't even remember. I don't did, remember. Uh, did they give that to you in Europe? Yeah. I don't even remember, and and uh, and when I did get that purple heart, I sent that home. Mm -hmm. I sent it to my oldest sister because mm -hmm. she knew all about it, you know. Okay. Uh, and do you still uh, participate with any of those veterans organizations? You still uh, go to meetings? Yeah, I still go to the meetings, uh, uh, veterans meetings, and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They mostly uh, World War II vets that go. Yeah, yeah. no, there's uh, there's veterans from all over, from uh, Korea, mm -hmm. Vietnam, Vietnam is it? Yeah, Korea, Vietnam, and even the, the Afghanistan and Iraq. Sure. Uh, They're mixed. There, it's not just. World War II veterans, they're all mixed. Were there ever any uh, reunions of the 26th Infantry? Unions? Reunions of the... Of oh, the... yeah. But I never... No, I, I don't know. I, I, I was always willing to work for my mother, you know. Mm -hmm. She had a big family and always wanted to help my mother. Mm -hmm. And she was a good mother. I'm sure. She was a good mother. What... Uh, what could you tell me in general terms about your military service in general? Uh, did you uh, change your view of the military after you came back, or did you...? No, I just forgot it all. Mm -hmm. I just forgot all about it. I just went to work and that was it. And, and, I, and at that time, I, I didn't have any children, to, uh, and I think my my sister kept all these, sister here and kept all these medals here for near for 30 or 60 years. I don't know how long she had them before she started showing them to my, her grandson. And they're the ones that put it in that plaque there for mm -hmm. me. That's Just correct. recently they did that. We took a picture of that. It, yeah. It was a very nice. My, grand, uh, uh, my, my sister's grandson did all that. I didn't even know I had all those ribbons and all that stuff, because uh, I just wanted to get out, come home. Just give me a minute here and I'll check to see that we've covered all the... Well, let me ask, uh, is there anything else you'd like to to, to talk about with uh, your service in the World no, War II? No, because I'll tell you the truth. Uh, uh, I never talk about it to anybody. Sometimes where I hang out, uh, uh, a place there, there's one guy that's my age, and some, um, I think he, um, Joe Logano, he's my age, and now and then he'll talk about World War II to some of the guys there. And I just listen, and I don't even answer it. Not to me. He talks it to other people that weren't in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were there any? Uh, I'm going to go back to the the military service now because there are a couple questions that I wanted to ask. Were any of your uh, unit ever captured by the Germans? No. Oh yes. I don't know what battle that was. I I, I, I well, we were pulled up for the night on the battlefield. I had orders to put my men on LPs. They call listening post, where you put one man here, one man here, one man here, one man here with him. And me and his sergeant Briette, he lived, he was from Massachusetts. And we were in a foxhole and we were smoking a cigarette. 
and it was a drizzly night and we had ponchos. Yeah. And, and we were smoking. I would go down and have a drag on a cigarette. Then this Sergeant Briette would go down. Then the next time I would come up and have a cigarette, I see a, like a bunch of Germans in front of you, right in front of you at night time. And when, I, when it, this Sergeant Britton, he came up, he had an M1, uh, he had a carbine. Yeah. He had a carbine, he let the whole 20 shots go, and I had the M1, I had all his shots go, and that's all I heard there all night long was groaning. Uh, groaning, the medics, medics, medics. Then when it came the morning, the next morning, some of our men we killed, they were captured and our men were bringing the Germans into our lines. That's, that's when you know you killed some of your own men and Germans. Mm -hmm. You had to watch yourself or you, you were going to get it next, you know. Uh, when you were on your push into Germany after the Battle of the Bulge, you said you were traveling with the 4th Armored Division? The 4th Armored, yeah. Did, uh, when you were fighting, were you, were you in combat with the 4th Ar Fourth Armored well, Division? Well, the 4th Armored was always going first, of course, um, vehicles. Yes, we, we, fought, we fought with the 4th Armored together, you know, as if they were in your company. But that was a division by itself, you know. Mm -hmm. That was a, a, a platoon or whatever, how the 4th Armored works, I don't know. So you had some... Uh, some Armored support yeah. during that part of the war. The Fourth Armored Division, yeah. And how long were you with the Fourth Armored Division? I don't remember that. Would I you? just know I was there till the war was all over. So you stayed with them quite yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were attached to you. And were there other uh, other infantry divisions attached to the Fourth Armored as well? Or was it just the 26th Infantry? No, no, there was other divisions. I remember there was an 87th Division, the Infantry Division also there, too. You know, of course, there could have been more, but I remember the 87th. Sounds like you're right up in the front, front yeah, lines. Yeah, all the time, all the time. Always on the move, always on the move. When you were moving, did, you, uh, did they have uh, uh, vehicle transportation for you? No, foot. Foot, foot all the time. How uh, how did your feet hold up? <laughs> they were pretty bad. Yeah. I, I I get a, a small veteran's pay for that now for my feet and being wounded. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's uh, probably all we need to talk about, Ricky. Is uh, is there anything else uh, yeah. that that we haven't covered that? that maybe we talked I think, about. I, I think there's everything you brought up, brought up a lot of memories there. You're, oh, well, let me, uh, I'm going to skip back again now. How did you get home from Europe? I don't remember. It was on a ship, probably? Oh, well, yeah, it was on a ship. It was on the, the biggest ship in the world. What the hell was the name of it? The Queen Mary was at that time. Okay. And now it's down in Long Beach, California has a museum now. And my second wife, I took my second wife over to, to California and on that ship, it showed her just where I was standing coming home. You know how big the Queen Mary is? Five days to come home on that ship from England. And I tell you, I, I see that ship like it was going under the ocean. Really? Yeah, you know, how big that thing was. I thought it was going under the ocean, then coming up. Wow! And there was more GIs that were sick, throwing up, but it never bothered me. That you, never bothered you me. You had spent oh. some time near the water before, so ooh, ooh. not so seasick. That, what a big ship! I thought that ship was going under the water, never coming up anymore. Did uh, but, uh, did that you? Waves must have been forty feet high. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Did uh, did it come back to New York or? Yeah, five days it took. To to New the York. Queen City? Mary made it from England, uh, uh, Southampton, England to New York. We were in Southampton, England, and it took five days. And that ship came over in five days. And when I went over, it took me eighteen days. Yeah. On a Liberty ship, you know. And after after you got back, uh, how long was it until you were discharged? You came back to New York. 
Did you have uh, a period of time uh, well, before I, you were discharged and came home? No, I was, I was discharged uh, in Camp Kilmer, New York, December 2nd, 1945. Yeah. And I guess they must have gave you the transportation for Camp Kilmer coming into New York, and that's when I, I knew uh, Grand Central Station pretty good myself, you know, before mm -hmm. the war. And that's how the only train that was a local that I came home on. Okay. Well, I appreciate your, uh, yeah. your sharing your memories with us and with the uh, Veterans History Project. And uh, we uh, thank you for your service. That's okay. And uh, You know, sometimes uh, it never dawned on me. Sometimes, like if I go shopping or something, I, some, some woman would uh, say to me, I didn't know the woman, she says, thank you for what you did because I think I still got, got the hat. Uh -huh. It says World War II veteran on it, you know. She says, thank you for what you've done, you know. Oh. And then uh, there was a, a fellow too that, that, was, that when I went shopping, he, he, he thanked me and shook my hand. You know, but you don't see many World War II veterans I don't. Well, it was uh, the most important thing that ever happened to the country. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. needed good men to to fight the battle. Yeah, well, see, you never you never think of those things, uh, you know. Like. Uh, well, do you have any questions for me uh, that relate to the the project or anything that? Uh, yeah. I don't know, and I'll, I'll say this on the record here, I don't know how long it's going to take to get the, the disc made and send it to you, but it, be patient because it'll, it'll come, well, but it well, might be a, a month or so. That's okay, that's all right, because I don't know, I, I think my sister has a place where you play that, I don't have any. Well, your, uh, your relatives who are uh, computer savvy will uh, appreciate your... Yeah, uh, yeah. Your stories and and uh, know what you did and uh, what a hero you were. It's a lot of things you want you want to forget too, you know. I'm sure. When you when you been through so so much. You know. Okay, I think we're done. Okay. Is that all right with you? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much.